apart even though you know you, you may know information you need to always show that you're ready to learn and being moldable as imgs it is necessary for us to show that we're flexible step one even though it's passing fail it needs as much as morning good afternoon uh, everyone depending on your time zone so today we have our student uh, akhil with us uh, he is going into the match this season and uh, he's done a lot of us clinical experiences so we wanted to get him and he wants to share his experiences about his usmle journey so far so welcome akhil we are very glad uh, that uh, you could spend some time to share your experiences of course mr pawan thank you so much How are you doing today? So let's uh, let's start with a bit of an introduction about you. Tell us about uh, yourself. Right. Uh, so my name is uh, Akhil Alaki. Uh, I am an IMG from Hyderabad, India. I finished MBBS from Hyderabad. I went to med school here. I graduated in the year of 2020, and I'm applying for internal medicine this year. Uh, to in this come upcoming match this fall, I finished about six months of USC. I'm done with my step one and step two. I took step one when when it was a score. and because of some uh, family issues i couldn't take step 2 immediately so i i had i took step 2 ck this year got finished it got a good score and now i'm applying for the match this year i'm going to take my step 3 soon as well okay yeah. so let's first start uh, you know some tips around step 1 and or ck so for mm-hmm. those of the students who may be still in med school or applying later on next year possibly Uh, mm-hmm. What are some of the things you want to advise them on, say, step one? Now that it is pass fail, in terms of resources, time it takes, etc. Any any highlights? Any tips? Ideally, I would still say step one, even though it's pass and fail, it needs as much fast focus as it would, even if it was a score exam, because the foundation from step one are always carried forward to step two CK, and because if you if you're strong in step one. your ck prep is easier and questions from step 3 question banks have so much overlap from step 1 so it makes it really easy once you understand what you're dealing with and once you go into usce a lot of questions which they ask you when the, the preceptors ask you is very important that you know the the pathology and the pathogenesis of it which is usually come which usually comes from your step 1 prep so it's it's very important and prudent that you know what you're learning from step 1 Uh, that's yeah. regarding step one. When it comes to CK, rather your prep is to be slightly different because there's no gold standard textbook as we had for step one, right? So for CK, I would say U World is the usual God, the Bible which everyone follows through. When you're doing U World, there are about four thousand odd questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in this four thousand odd questions, what I would say is uh, about about seventy five, eighty percent of the question bank has to be completed thoroughly. and it should be done randomly like all have to be mixed together to emulate the exam as close as possible and once while doing that uh so when every time you do a block of 40 questions take the question dissect all each and every option to know why the other options were incorrect and it's also important to make sure that you read the entire topic thoroughly for instance there's a question on say uh urinary tract infection read every single possibility every single variant of the question you might encounter in your exam that is important also it's also important to do cms forms and your nbma exams because the writers for the nbma exams and cms forms are the same writers for the usmle ck exam as well so once you're thorough with that i think you're good to go but it's important to dissect each and everything because the questions in your final exam can become vague and sometimes you don't really understand what's happening and then the stress it becomes really difficult so your mind should understand that you you know you need to you're supposed to be on this aut- autopilot while answering questions during the exam day so and that only comes through practice and dissecting it to such an extent that you know what what's coming just by reading the question so the next question you know the focus of this is the us clinical experiences mm-hmm. so you said you've done 6 months right, right? so help our students understand first the importance of usc what is why is the usc this important this is a wonderful question because i was ideally apprehensive with usc as well because you know you do usc in a small clinic and come back you show 3 months as a minimum requirement and go but once i actually entered usc my first usc was in an outpatient setup in in a private clinic he was he was an academic attending yes but that's where i was I had a lot of one on one time with the preceptor and there i realized this this variation of us the us clinical practice is so different from what we do in back back home in india although medicine as such is the same 
the standards, the variety we practice, and the qual the each and every attention to detail we give here, and the amount of uh, care we give to each patient is so vastly different. Although in India, you can see that in corporate hospitals, but in medical colleges, usually you know slightly on the lower end, because medical colleges in, in India are this is a huge population, and because of the low economy there, we we tend to not give as much as importance to giving, you know, spending so much time with patients. But back in America, it's it's completely different. It's it's very necessary for us to understand because once we get into residency, you will not, when if you just don't do USC and come fall into residency, you will be lost because there's so much about, especially coming to every system uses uh, some form of, uh, you know, uh, EMR systems. Some, some use ECW, some use EPIC. And without getting exposed to any of those, on day one in your residency, you'll be you'll be lost. You'll be a lost kid. You just be looking around trying to figure out what happened. And since you're already a doctor there and you're trying to treat patients, you cannot start learning from zero there, right? You need to you you need to start working out and yeah. figure out what's happening. So I think that is one important aspect. And also, especially a lot of uh, IMGs fail in communication with patients, especially because some some IMGs have strong accents. Right, and it becomes really difficult for IMGs to, um, you know, for the patients to understand the IMGs rather. And when you lack in certain skills of English or some communicable skills, those do tend to pull you back during residency and interviews. And practicing them is the only way to get over them. And the best way to practice them is doing USC. Yeah, good. So now tell us, you know, again, six months, what would be an ideal split for an IMG? Inpatient, outpatient, different state, same state. What have you kind of gathered? Wonderful question again. So I would always say the first one, first two to three, two months should be outpatient for sure, because it's only an outpatient you will see more patients, right? Because that's in our in a clinic you'll have about thirty patients a day, and if there are three if there are three or four students per with uh, each preceptor, you you can see an average of ten patients per day. Ten patients, ten cases you learn that day. Go home, read them you learn 10 different cases. And most uh, outpatient clinics see the bread and butter of medicine. It's very rare that you see you know, extraordinary cases. And if you do, well and good, right? So you do this for two months, learn how to communicate, learn the standards of medical practice in America, learn the local drug names, and everybody has different tests, the small caveats and nitty gritties of medicine. That's where you learn them for about two, three months. And your third and fourth rotation ideally should be, you know, one, one should be an, a hybrid rotation in my opinion, your third rotation inpatient, outpatient, and your fourth and fifth rotation should be preferably something where all the in, in knowledge you gathered over the past three, four months, go use that in front of a program director because they have the power to give you an interview, right? So if, if you can make use of the six months or three months if you uh, learned, put, the, put it for, put it, uh, impress a program director, get an interview from that and come back. And the last, I think the last five, if you can, I did six months. So my last one was an observership in a university because as a grad it's difficult for us to get externships and internship i wanted to get i would like to get into university program so i went in front of the university sister spoke to them and said you know what i'm trying to impress you i'm trying you just show your knowledge there again and hopefully you know if they're impressed you get an interview if not you still have a university experience there and what are your views on doing everything in one state versus different states oh well um as imgs it is necessary for us to show that we're flexible because we're always on the lower hierarchy of you know getting a residency spot there right and when you're trying to show them that we're when you show them you're flexible you can work anywhere and you're easily adaptable it it plays better and also it also helps in the geographic signaling as well because the eras has your geo signaling which is really important now programs do tend to care about it so when you show that you worked in six different places you, it gives you an easier way to express why you like a certain place. I could, I can do a rotation in New Jersey, New York, and I can, and if I try to signal some place in California, they'll ask me what routes do you have in California. I've never been there, so it's really difficult for me to explain that. So if you if if I, if I did one in New Jersey, one in New York, one in California, even if it was one, it was a three, four, three or four week rotation, I can still see it. The four week I did there was really impressive, and I was really happy. So it makes it easier in that way as well. It's all about being very strategic with your USC so that it helps your application. You're always supposed to play the long game. Uh, so now that you have done these rotations, what are three or four best practices or learnings that you got from these that you want other uh, students to 
be prepared for or at least uh, to get from your experiences, whether it's communication with the patients or some of those things that you've learned? Right. So ideally, if um, if you're weak in communication, in C, you, you cannot be an introvert and try to do USMLE, right? You need to speak out. You need to get out of your shell. You need to speak to patients. Being an introvert and doing internal medicine especially is difficult because internal medicine is all about patient care. So try speaking to people as much as you can. If you're if it's difficult, try communicating with patients in English. Try communicating with your friends. Learn the good language and try you know, tweaking your accent a little bit so that you pay, the patients don't have difficulty. And patients are not annoyed when you try to speak to them. Right, that's important. Second, I would say is learning. You know, learn as much as you can every day. You're learning because you're you're still a student. You know, you're not a resident yet. So you need to learn every day, learn as much as you can and read a paper or two, you know, absolutely because program directors do, because since program directors are very academic physicians, they tend to appreciate if you uh, have some research background. So read about one or two research papers a week, you know, try discussing with them. So I would really say doing that and just open up every day. You, you learn one thing, you see a case, you see a case in your clinic, Go back, read all about it in and out, so that you know by the by the time you get into residency, you know you know that the one case you saw. Say you see you see a case of heart failure, read it in and out, spend two days on it, learn every single possibility on it, go back, and now you're prepared for heart failure the rest of your life. So learning is one thing I would say: learning, communication, and reading research papers. I think this would really get you a long way. Well, one thing to which is exciting, which is very primal, which goes, which goes without saying is being humble and showing that you're ready to learn. Apart, even though you know you, you may know information, you need to always show that you're ready to learn and being moldable. Because every time you're moldable, that's what helps program directors to know. They don't want someone who's already an established clinician. You, they know that you're not an established clinician, not a superficial doctor, super great doctor, because they want a resident to, they want to take in a resident and make him one of their own. And if you're moldable, it makes it easier for them to shape you and develop you into their liking. Yeah. Uh, last question. Uh, if you were to undo some things from your USC or maybe mistakes that you have learned from, right? Were there any things that you now look back and see, oh, maybe I could have done it differently, or maybe this is something I should have avoided? From my USC specifically, I do not recall anything as such. I have, fortunately, I've got most positive feedback from my preceptors. Uh, if I could do anything else, which is something else I could undo, I'd probably do more USC because I really had a great time doing more USC. Yeah, I, sure. I, enjoy working, I enjoy being in a hospital so much. I enjoy being in front of preceptors, learning from them. If I could get, since the visa constraint will let me six months, I could go and do much. But if I couldn't, I would just go back and do more. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Akhil. This is excellent and uh, good luck with your upcoming residency match. You, I wish you all the best and thank you for spending time with us.